Uh, hey guys, uh, back again with another review impressions video. Uh, this one's going to be a bit short, I think. I've got a bit of a sore throat and I actually I feel a cold coming on, so I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to completely destroy my throat. Uh, I know in a couple days, it's it's like the very start of a sore throat, so I'm, by tomorrow or in a couple days, it's going to be pretty bad. So I wanted to get this video out there. Uh, anyways, the game in question, The World Ends With You. Uh, this is probably my most, like, I wanted to play this DS game, out of all the DS games out there, this is the one I've wanted to play the most, I think. Um, this game's just got, like, there's so much praise that goes towards this game, it's absolutely insane. Like, a lot of people call it their favorite DS game, one of their favorite RPGs. Um, so I was very excited to play this. After, Radiant Historia, I think, is the last RPG on the DS that I really, like, definitely want to play. Um... Uh, I still I still have that game, but it's sealed. I really don't want to open it, but I, you know what? Like, I should probably open that and play it. Anyways, uh, The World Ends With You. Finally got around to finishing it. Um, actually, it took me a lot quicker than I was expecting. Um, uh, I'll, I'll dive right in, basically, uh, with the story. And this is where... I don't want to talk too much about the story, as with most of my videos, because it's just... It, it, you can easily get into spoiler territories. And also, the, for the fact that the story is kind of hard to describe, there's a lot to it. Um, it reminds me of a lot of nine nine like it like in nine 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 in a lot of ways. Um, basically, your your character Neku, uh, he's he's like I, I think he's a teenager. Uh, this game takes place entirely in the Shibuya district of Japan, uh, like a kind of a fictional version of it. Uh, and you basically wake up. Um, you wake up. You don't know what's going on. You you're a part of this game where in seven days. Uh, it, it, it goes by in days, and if you don't complete these missions for the, these Reapers, uh, you, you die uh, if you don't complete your mission. You get this, a timer on your hand, uh, which that reminded me of 999 in a lot of ways, and just how this, how you can actually, your characters can actually die in this game. It's, it's a pretty dark storyline. I wasn't expecting it to be as dark uh, as it is. And I don't see that's all I want to say about the storyline, because there's a lot of different surprises, twists, and turns. Um... The storyline itself, it, it's good. I like it. Um, that said, I, it, it, there was times where I was just kind of getting bored with all the, the dialogue. Uh, it's weird. It, it didn't entirely grab me, but I say, I'd say I was pretty invested in it. Uh, the thing is, though, I, I beat the game, right? And it's around like a 25-hour game. It took me 22 hours to beat. But after you beat this game, there's a ton of different... Uh, there's all this side content, like bonus content. You can play through all the chapters all over again and kind of unlock more of the of the story, uh, which I haven't done that yet. Uh, I want to get to some other games first, but I, I'm always going to have this game sitting around, so I, I'll probably chip at that every so ever so often. So I don't have the full story, uh, so it, it is probably better than I than I'm thinking right now. But I, I enjoyed the story overall. It can be a bit melodramatic at times, uh, a bit heavy-handed as well with its messages. Um, but overall, I, I quite enjoyed it. it. It didn't hook me like the 999 storyline uh, did, for instance. Um, but overall, I think the storyline's quite good in this game. It, it reminds me a lot of an anime. In fact, this whole game is basically like a playable anime, really. Um, and I'm not too big into anime. Like, and In fact, I actually kind of can't stand it, which is weird. I love anime-styled games like this, but anime itself I just can't get into. Um, but anyways, that's the story. Uh, I'm just going to briefly go over the visuals and sound in this game, which is, it, it, honestly, f visually and, you know, in, in terms of sound, that that's where this game shines, I think. Uh, th this game's got a very striking visual design. It, it's very anime-inspired, and I think a lot of the character designs are similar to other Square uh, games, but I, I, it fits the game so perfectly. I love the backgrounds in this game. They're really detailed, uh, the Shibuya backgrounds. Uh, it takes place in, you know, the Shibuya district, and you're going from... Uh, area to area. It, the, the map itself is not too big, but it's it's crammed with all these little neat details and stores. I, I just, the, the look of this game, uh, it's a very nice 2D look. Uh, it's probably one of the best looking um, uh, DS games, and the style, like this game's got style and spades. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's really endearing, and I just, I loved it from beginning to end. Uh, also, to go along with that is the audio. A lot of J-pop kind of type tracks, J-rap, uh, kind of tracks. Not really my style of music, but it fits this game so perfectly. Uh, some of the songs really got stuck in my head. Uh, reminds me a bit of Persona music in a way. 
Uh, I think Persona mu music might be even a bit more eclectic. Uh, Persona 3s and 4s music, and I definitely more catchy too. But there were some songs that got a bit repetitive in this uh, game. The the rap type songs I wasn't too big on, but all all of the music really fits the theme of the game, the style of the game. It all comes together to create this just the style that's just so endearing and just it it, it really it, it's really awesome. Um, so I did want to briefly go over that. It's probably one of the best parts of the game is the, the game's style, visuals, and sound. Uh, but with that, into the gameplay, which is the the, the main portion of this game. And it, it's where I have a bit of... It, they're not really complaints. Uh, I'll get into this. Anyways, this game is entirely controlled at the touch screen uh, on the bottom screen, that is. Uh, you can control your character walking around the map. Um, but in battles, you're using the top screen and the bottom screen. Uh, your main character's on the bottom screen, your partner's on the top screen. Uh, on the bottom screen, you basically collect pins throughout this throughout this game, and those are your attacks. Um, you, so you equip these pins, and they're basically your attacks are, are like touch commands. So say you might have like this bullet type attack where you kind of tap enemies and you'll shoot bullets. Uh, or you can have like a, a tremor attack where you can scratch the screen and cause an earthquakes. Uh, there's all these different kind of attacks. There's healing uh, pins as well. Um, so the bottom screen, you're doing that. You're attacking enemies um, that are on the bottom screen. And the same enemies will be on the top screen as well, fighting your partner. And your partners can have, depending on what partner you have, you use the D-pad to go through these little kind of menus, like pressing up, down, left, and right to kind of... It's it's very confusing, and I, this is the thing, the problem I had, uh, and it's actually more of a problem with my, me and not the game itself. A lot of people love this battle system, and it, it's got a learning curve. Oh, trust me, like it took a few hours to me for me to even get used to playing with the bottom screen. But later in the game, uh, and pretty much all the game, you got to be using both screens at once, controlling the top character with the D-pad, the bottom character with the touch screen, and dodging uh, the enemies and attacking the enemies on both screens, and Throughout the entire game, I just couldn't properly focus on both at the same time. Uh, I found myself basically relying on the bottom screen and having my top character set to auto, like really fast auto, and only at the, like the very end of the game was I actually starting to finally get used to, you know, looking uh, from one screen to the other. Uh, this is like my problem with RTS games as well, why I suck at them so much. I can't concentrate on like tons of things at once. Like. I just can only concentrate on one thing, um, so I can't really knock the game for that because uh, that's really more my problem or my fault there. And this battle system is incredibly unique. It makes full use of the DS's capabilities. It's really original and it's really fun too. Uh, it's really fun collecting the pins and leveling them up because you can level them up more the more you use them. Um, and the the one problem I do have, and this is actually a problem with the DS itself, I think, more than the game. Uh, a lot of the attacks, you'll be doing, like, drawing motions, and they get confused with one another. Uh, you'll accidentally use one pin's attacks when you were, were trying to do another, and some of them just wouldn't flat-out work for me. Uh, and, you know, and that's mainly, like, a responsiveness kind of thing with the touchscreen, which a lot of DS games, I find, have this problem. Rhythm Heaven uh, had this problem as well. And I don't think it's the World Ends With You's fault that, you know, some of these touchscreen controls just don't work properly. It's, you know, it's the touchscreen itself. Touchscreen... To me, it's it's never it's not really a an input that's always going to be 100% responsive. Similar with like the Wii U waggle, uh, not waggle, you know, Wii U controls. But that that was a very minor complaint, but it did frustrate frustrate at me at times. Uh, this game's got no random encounters. You kind of scan areas uh, for enemies. You kind of you can tap enemies and get into chain battles and chain combos that way. Uh, sometimes you'll be forced to fight because the game kind of the flow is kind of weird where you kind of progress through these chapters and you kind of have to, you'll find roadblocks uh, and characters will have you doing little side, side quests to, to bypass the blocks. Uh, it might be like wearing certain clothing or destroying a certain amount of enemies on screen. Um, and that's base, the basic flow of the game. There's some light puzzle solving here and there. Uh, I actually kind of like the flow of the game. It, it's The pacing in this game is really excellent. Uh, I never felt myself getting bored throughout this game. Uh, that's why I beat it so quickly. Uh, but the no random counters is nice. I was, I was, because you, you basically pick your fights in this game. So I was kind of worried that I might have to grind towards the end. Uh, and, but you don't. And that's because of this game's extremely smart difficulty design. Uh, how they do difficulty in this game is 
genius. I really wish more games would do this. Uh, basically, you can choose if you want to go on easy mode, normal mode, hard mode, uh, whenever you want, uh, and you can basically lower your health uh, in the game, your maximum HP, and the lower you go, the more chance you have at getting pins in battle and getting more experience, uh, as well as with changing different difficulties. You can get different pins depending on what difficulty you're on, uh, how much health you have, and this basically allows you to make the game as hard or as easy as you want it to be, and I love that. I really wish more games would do this, because it basically made, made it so that I was never frustrated. Uh, and not only that, when you're in battles and you lose, you can immediately retry if you if you die at a boss. Uh, you can retry. You can you know you can escape battles too, and you or you can just retry in easy mode if you are having too much trouble with normal or hard mode. It, it's absolutely genius difficulty design. It's rewarding if you're playing on harder difficulties. Not quite if you're on easy mode, but it's there if you you know if you're struggling to get past a certain part. It, it it's great. It's absolutely amazing. I really wish more games would do this. Uh, why they don't, I don't know. Um, but I really did enjoy that. Uh, another, there's a little different original ideas thrown in here that I really love. Uh, the, the, the trends, uh, each part of Shibuya will have different trends as far as clothing and pins go. Uh, the clothing you wear, your equipment, uh, and, and pins are, are, are a part of different brands. And each district will have different popularities. So if you're wearing one brand that's super popular in that district and most of your pins and clothing is, are made up of that, uh, you'll you you know your pins will be stronger. You'll do more damage. Uh, if they're not popular in that area, they won't do as much damage. You'll be weaker. Uh, it's a really cool system. Uh, and at first, I was like confused why you couldn't sell your equipment that you buy. Uh, and that's that's the reason. So you always have it in your massive inventory if you need to constantly switch uh, if you need to switch clothing on the fly. Uh, to get money, you're getting you get pins uh, in battle that you can sell for money. You can even sell your attacks for money too. Uh, there's a cool little food system as well, which I, I really like this. Uh, you can basically eat food, uh, and the more battles you do, uh, the food gets digested, and you can get like a health bonus, attack bonus, a bravery bonus, which determines how much what like what kind of stuff you can equip. Uh, the cool thing with this is if you're not playing the game for an extended period, if you leave the game on your shelf or whatever, you, you come back to it after a few days, uh, you'll get PP towards your pins and uh, that food system. Like you'll you'll be you won't be full anymore because you can't just stuff your stuff your face with all this food and get these crazy bonuses. Um, but if you're you're away from the system for a while, you can you know have some more food. Uh, it's a really cool system. I, I really I really enjoyed that. I always love games that reward the player for you know not. You know, it, it, this game is really mindful of your time. Uh, it, you know, the, you can save anywhere you want other than, like, this one area towards the end of the game. Um, but it, it's, it's just... A lot of the stuff this game does is refreshingly original, and it, it everything it does just cuts down on frustration. Uh, another thing really cool, if you're, if you're uh, like, a completionist, there's no missables in this game. Uh, you don't... You're never going to really need a guide to play through this game. And again, I love that. I love... You know, there's nothing too obtuse in this game. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, I wasn't expecting as much content. Like, the main story, you can beat it in, like, 20 hours, but there's all this bonus content. I'm sure I'll, at by the time I'm done this game, probably at least 50 hours of content in here. I, but, yeah, I overall, this game, I, I really enjoyed The World Ends With You. Is it my favorite DS game? No, I, I still think I prefer 999. I think there's a few others I might like better. Um, so I'm not, you know, I, I don't love this game as much as a lot of other people do. That I think a lot of that just boils down to uh, that battle system and me just not being able to get the hang of that top screen. I, I did also find the top screen kind of confusing. Um, I will say too, I, this game is quite talky in times. I, I found in myself, I found myself kind of skipping through dialogue a bit, which I feel kind of guilty for doing that. But I don't know. Uh, the characters are really good too. I forgot to mention that I think in the story part. But the characters I really like in this game, they're they're really interesting characters. Uh, but yeah, overall, a very enjoyable game. Uh, I'm glad I finally get played through it. Uh, excellent game. Definitely highly recommended if you have a DS. It's a must-own for the DS. Uh, anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.